Hi everyone, welcome to another Rubber Dance Design Team tutorial and this is a tutorial with a little bit of a difference. Now if I get through this little introduction without uh, having to retake it about 16 times uh, it will be a miracle because there's lots of S's in this post that I'm about to make. So Sisterhood of Snarky Stampers, they are a challenge website and we are collaborating with those, Rubber Dance, who as you know make um, stamps and the Sisterhood of Snarky Stampers are a challenge site with a little bit of attitude, stampers with attitude I'd call it. So lots of great fun going on over the, at their site. So this is going to be a real fun challenge and the challenge was to make a tag, an ATC or a card using a particular stamp set from Rubber Dance and it's called Sarcasm Superpower. So I think that you're going to uh, begin to get the drift of what this blog hop is all about. Now I will leave you all the links to this at the end of the video so you'll be able to hop to my blog and then follow the trail to see what everybody uh, got up to and created with this real fun set of stamps so these are the sarcasm super power stamps and it really was great fun thinking of something uh, to illustrate how fun these stamps actually are so the challenge was laid down and this is what I came up with. I did intend only to make one tag, but I just kept coming up with ideas as I looked at all the different uh, sentiments that's on this set and uh, I came up with three ideas. So I'm going to share one of those with you right now. So this tutorial is for the tag that's in the middle and uh, then if you pop over to my blog you can see the little changes that I made to make the other two tags that are on either side. And the other thing to know is to hold on to the end of this video for the link back to my blog because if you follow the trail today which is the 26th of September you could uh, win a prize and I'll give you the details of that at the very end of this video. So I'm going to start out as I normally do when I'm making tags with a piece of paper, actually I'm cutting three, that measures three inches by six inches and then I'm going to trim them into a tag shape. So rather than keep measuring the tops of my tags, I keep this little tag handy and uh, I can just pop it at the top of any tag that I make and just trim them uh, into that tag shape. So there's a little tip for you if you're uh, someone who likes making tags like me. I don't tend to use a um, bought tag, I tend to use up all my spare pieces of card to make my tags. So the next thing to do was to cover my tag and the lovely Bibby at Rubber Dance had sent me this gorgeous paper. I presume it is in Norwegian but I couldn't swear to it <laughs> and I have no idea what it says but I hope it is a little bit uh, naughty to go with these stamps <laughs> and not some, not some text that's really really boring although I suppose it will be a good contrast. So whenever I'm attaching a paper to a project like a tag and I want a nice smooth finish I like to use um, Ranger's um, Multi Medium, that's what it's called. <laughs> this one actually is a glossy one but it won't matter because it's just going to go uh, act as a glue between the um, lovely book paper that uh, I'm going to be attaching to the tag and the tag base itself. So it's spreadable, you just spread it on with your brush and then you can smooth your paper, whether it be a book page like this or a patterned paper, onto your tag base. I'm just making sure, I know it's not going to be quite long enough to fit my tag and, and sometimes these kinds of things dictate how your project is going to turn out and you'll see that the paper that I chose, oh, I've got two pieces there, the paper that I chose to fill in that bottom section actually helped me uh, come up with a cohesive design for all three tags. So once you're happy that you've got your text on straight, um, make sure you press everything down really well, make sure it's nice and smooth, no air bubbles, and then take your scissors and trim off the excess. So anyone that's uh, a frequent visitor to this YouTube channel will know that I love making tags so um, this really was a great fun challenge to take part in. So I've picked this black and white paper, great way to use up scraps when you're making tags and uh, I'm going to attach a strip to the bottom and you'll see that I'll do that to each of the tags in this collection. So I'm just marrying it up to meet the bottom of the book paper and then trimming off the excess. So my tag's all nice and dry but I just wanted to make a little reinforcement ring for the top of my tag and I'm going to do that by punching a half inch circle from my black and white paper and 
I've centered the design so that uh, it looks right sort of as a cohesive circle as you will see when I turn it over I'm just using a little bit of PVA glue once I uh, unblock it with my needle <laughs> and you can see there it looks like a piece that was meant to be because I've centered the design on the circle so just making sure this is all nice and dry before I begin stamping so if you're thinking about getting these stamps for yourself, they really do make you look at the stamps that you've got in your collection in a different way because they're a little bit tongue in cheek and uh, a little bit fun. Um, you might be looking at your stamps and thinking, I've got nothing to go with these. And I, I did start out thinking that, but the more I thought about what I could do with them, the more I came up with the correct stamps that I wanted to use. So I'm going to be using this beetle with the sentiment, I'm not antisocial, I'm pro solitude and uh, you can see whether you think my idea is quite funny or not when I get to the end of my tag. I seem to have been doing a lot of masking lately and that's mainly because uh, I'm honing my skills. Uh, it's quite new to me and uh, I'm going to talk you through a little process of masking uh, because I want to create a group of beetles on my tag. So I'm going to stamp onto this post-it note just checking where the sticky strip is and making sure I get as much of my beetle uh, along that sticky strip as I can because because it's got sort of the main body part and then the fine legs I want to make sure that uh, the actual bottom of this beetle is uh, on that sticky strip so that it will stay in place when I'm doing my stamping and the other thing that I'm going to do is cut out more than one beetle at once particularly when you've got a design like this which is a little bit more tricky to cut out it's always wise to cut out a few and then you can just pop them in with your stamps and keep them safe for the next time you want, might want to do a bit of masking with your beetle stamp. If you want to know which sets these little stamps come from then I'll leave you a list at the end of my blog post so uh, when you click on the link at the end of this video you'll be able to get a full list of the stamps that are used for these three tags. Making your masks for this technique it really is important that you make sure that you get all that detail so although this is a little bit fiddly it's worth taking your time and making sure that you don't uh, cut off the poor beetle's legs or antennae because uh, they will be useful when you're making your little collage of uh, stamped beetles. So I'm going to be stamping and embossing the images on my tags. I got a little bit carried away with the excitement of it all and I forgot one of the steps, one of the important steps of stamping uh, and embossing and that is to make sure that you dust your card down with a little bit of talc or one of those uh, little anti-static bags. And you'll see here that I just have to spend a little bit of time uh, with a paintbrush knocking off the excess um, powder so I'm stamping with a sticky ink pad and that's called um, for me I'm using um, a perfect medium stamp pad I'm using a fine detail black uh, embossing powder from Cosmic Shimmer and I realized then that I forgot to add the talc that's why I had those bits to knock off and so I'm rushing out of the room to grab my talc and then I'm coming back again <laughs> And after rushing out and looking in the room next door, I realised it was right next to me on the little trolley that sits next to me. <laughs> so I am dusting my tag with a little bit of embossing powder and this way I will uh, get much less uh, of the embossing powder sticking where I don't want it to. And I'm going to ink up my beetle stamp and I've protected the bottom of my tag with a post-it note. And then I'm going to create a group of beetles. So I'm stamping the first couple of beetles, the ones that uh, aren't going to overlap. And then I'm pouring on the embossing powder. So make sure when you're using your embossing powder that you use a scrap piece of paper to catch all the excess. And don't forget if you have any little spits and spots of embossing powder to get rid of them with your paintbrush. So I've got, as you can see, no excess bits now that I've dusted my t uh, talc over my tag. It really does make a big difference. So I'm just heat setting those beetles, making sure that I don't blow my embossing powder everywhere. And 
Don't forget to tidy up in between so that you don't end up with embossing powder all over everything. And now it's time to use your little beetle masks. So I, as you know, cut four pieces at once and I'm going to use them to cover up the beetles as I stamp more beetles to create a real group feeling. <laughs> I want to create a whole host of beetles. It might give you uh, the heebie-jeebies as you watch this video, uh, creating this group of beetles at the bottom of my tag. So I think you'll be grasping my thinking. I'm trying to illustrate the saying, I'm not antisocial, I'm pro-solitude. And so I'm creating a group of beetles and then I'm gonna have my one pro solitude beetle at the top of my tag. So it's just a process of masking the beetles that you're going to stamp over and then embossing them until you've got a group of beetles across the bottom area of your tag. I'm using all four there to get this final beetle and the solitary beetle onto my tag. So masking really is a great way to get lots of different effects with your stamps and uh, you can see here that I've managed to create a real good group of beetles all crawling over one another for the bottom of my tag. Don't forget, put your masks with your stamps because they'll still be sticky and you'll be able to use them again and you won't have to cut them out. <laughs> so I'm just using the edge of my scissors to distress the edge of my tag. It just roughs up the edge of the paper. You can get tools to do this, uh, but I find that my scissors work quite well. The scissors are closed. I'm just using the edge of the closed scissors to... Uh, rough up the paper. I, I don't use the actual blade because I find that's a bit too sharp. So as you can see here that I'm painting my stamps in with a little bit of paint and I'm also um, drawing a think bubble from each of my sentiments. So I, I use my pencil to sketch out that think bubble first and I want it to be coming from this solitary beetle and then I'm going to be using a glue pen in order to emboss that line. You can't see it very well at the moment on camera. I'm just following that think bubble with my glue pen. It starts to appear as the glue soaks into the paper and then I'm just going to emboss it in the normal way. So I've added, or I've used the glue to stick the embossing powder to the tag. Now you do need to be a little bit careful not to overheat the other parts of your embossing. So keep moving the hot air over your line so that you don't over melt the other bits and pieces that are on your tag. I wanted to make my sentiments stand out a little more. So I decided to use white as I've got white on my um, contrasting paper, my patterned paper. And I'm using the fact that embossing powder is shiny and creates a resist to add a little bit of paint into the background of the stamp. So I'm just literally painting a wash of paint. This happens to be a uh, picket fence distress paint, but you could equally use a white acrylic paint to do this. And I'm just washing it over the image. And then whilst the paint is still damp, um, not quite dry, I'm just blotting off the excess paint from those shiny areas. And I'm gonna do this a couple of times just to get the uh, depth of white that I want to achieve on these images. So you can see I have to be a little bit careful on the small areas of the legs and that, but the bodies, I'm not trying to paint in between each of those lines. I'm just painting over the entire beetle and then using my wet wipe to just bring or polish up uh, those embossed lines once more. and then just dabbing off that excess paint to reveal the embossing again. Now I could, could have decided at this point to go completely 
um, black and white with the book pages but I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of colour into the mix as well. But before I get to that part I'm going to ink the edges of my stamp just to create a frame around my tag using my black soot distress ink and I'm just flicking it across those distressed edges and it just helps to draw your eye into the centre of the design I also felt that the background was just a little bit clean looking for the look that I was going for so I wanted to add another element of pattern so I'm using my mask to mask off my little beetles and a little bit of my <laughs> quote I'm using the rounded bottoms of my beetles to be able to uh, just stamp a little bit of that gorgeous Harlequin stamp into the background of my tag so the trick is if you mask something the thing thing that you stamp over it will look like it is in the background so I masked my beetles and I masked my um, sentiments and therefore those Harlequin uh, little diamonds appear as if they're behind the image now the other thing that I like to do is frame my tag completely so I'm cutting a piece of black cardstock slightly bigger than my tag and I am trimming it to the tag shape you can see it just finishes off the tag nicely and again I've decided to go for that distressed edge so I'm rubbing or scraping the back of my scissors around that tag if you use the blade it really is too sharp so uh, I think as long as you've got a nice pair of scissors that are a little bit rough around the edges they work really well I stamped that diamond pattern with a black archival ink and now I'm adding the colour so I'm using my distress inks as a water paint and I'm using peacock feathers and spiced marmalade and I'm just colouring in certain areas with that gorgeous peacock feathers and then coming back in with the orange to highlight other areas and I wanted my pro solitude beetle to stand out a little bit more so I'm going to make him more colourful than the rest of the pack So for those of you that don't know, Distress Inks can be used in lots of different ways and one of them is as a water paint. So all I've done is squidge the ink pad onto my craft mats and then I'm using a wet brush in order to pick up the ink and use it as a paint to colour in various little pieces of this stamped design. The other thing that you can do with your Distress Ink is customise your ribbon to match your project as I have done and I'm going to show you how to create a piece of ribbon that looks like this. So I've got a piece of American seam binding and I'm going to use up the little puddles of ink I've already got on my um, craft mat. So I've got my spiced marmalade and I've got my peacock feathers. I'm just adding a little spray of water and then dropping my ribbon randomly into those puddles of ink and I'm creating a kind of mottled effect so I just want a little bit more orange so I've got another puddle of orange and when I'm happy with the colour I'm drying my ribbon and I'm keeping my ribbon flat so that I can stamp on it sometimes you can crinkle up your ribbon as you dry it if you want that kind of look but this time I'm going for a flatter ribbon because I want to stamp on it and I'm going to be using this uh, diamond stamp and I've got a uh, Versafine ink pad and I'm just stamping those diamonds along the length of the ribbon. You have to make sure that your ribbon is dry when you do this and obviously we're only stamping the design on one side of the ribbon. So again once your ribbon is dry you're ready to add it to your project and I'm using a strong double-sided tape across the back of my tag and then I'm going to pleat my ribbon so it forms a little bit of a frill at the bottom of my tag you can see I'm just doing it randomly I'm not being too precious I'm just using the double sided tape in order to be able to create little pleats along the length of the ribbon and then I've cut a little bit extra on either side I'm securing the top of the thrill the thrill the frill with another piece of double sided tape and you can see how pretty it looks at the bottom of the tag and then I'm using that second piece of 
double sided tape just to fold in those raw edges. And then the rest of the double sided tape will help hold the tag onto the black frame when we add that to the main tag. I'm also using some thin double sided tape to add a thin ribbon to the top and bottom of my um, patterned paper strip. So you can see that I've left the double sided tape long and I'm also leaving my ribbon long and that way I can just fold over those lengths of ribbon to the back of the tag. And now that I'm sure I'm not going to be wrapping anything to the inside or the back of the tag, I'm going to attach the two pieces together. So I've used a PVA glue in order to do this and of course I've got those little strips of double sided tape at the bottom of the tag and I'm joining it to the frame and then punching the hole at the top of the tag and you can see things are really starting to come together now. So I'm just cutting another couple of lengths of ribbon to finish off the top of the tag. Before I do I forgot to add the little bit of colour to the little reinforcer and I'm just brightening my beetle slightly. And I like to come up with lots of different ways to add ribbon um, or threads to the top of my tag and this time I've decided to keep all the ribbons as flat as I can and facing forward so that that uh, diamond design really stands out. So I'm just going to tie a piece of that fine black ribbon around the top of all the uh, little pieces of ribbon to hold them together and stop them unthreading from the top of the tag and I'm just tying that ribbon into a little bow. And then it's time to trim the ends of the ribbon and I always like to just trim them on a slight angle to help stop them fraying. And that's the little topper for the tag finished off. I'm just adding a couple of gems to that pattern paper strip. Well, they're more like little enamel dots um, and they match that orange perfectly. And I just wanted to make that little Pro Solitude beetle stand out even more, making sure he's dry. And then I'm going to add a little coat of glossy accents. And remember, when you're adding glossy accents to your project, keep the nozzle emerged in the liquid as you kind of flood the image with that glossy accent mixture and that way you'll uh, help avoid getting bubbles. Well, that's it, I hope that I've given you enough information to be able to create tags uh, along a similar style to these and that I've set you thinking about how you can make use of these really uh, fun sentiment stamps and I really thought that the I'm sexy and I know it went perfectly with that enigmatic smile of the Mona Lisa and uh, I had fun adding the horns to that very romantic image normally um, called Resting Woman and uh, adding that quote 667 evil and then some. So they really are a fun set of stamps to use with your projects and to uh, give people a chuckle when you give them the cards that you might be making with them. So if you happen to be watching this on the 26th of September, the 27th of September, the 28th of September and right up till midnight on the 29th of September 2014, you could be in with the chance to win this fab set of stamps. So pop along to the um, blog link that I'm going to leave you at the end of the video which will take you back to my blog and you can start your hop from there. So big thank you to the Sisterhood of Snarky Stampers as well as Rubber Dance for inviting me to join in this blog hop. I've had loads of fun and I'm pretty sure that you will find lots more fun along that blog hop trail. So I hope you've enjoyed this fun tutorial. If you have, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the like button, the share button, uh, any of those buttons um, to share this creativity. And until next time, thank you for watching.
So I just thought I'd mention, if you're watching this after the 29th of September 2014, it doesn't mean you can't follow that blog hop trail. You can still follow the link. You can still look at everything that everybody uh, made for this challenge. You just won't be able to join in, unfortunately, with the prize draw. But uh, I'm sure you'll still have lots of fun looking at what everybody has made using these fun stamps.